This is John Monroe, Director of Custom Editorial at SCW. I want to welcome you to today's webcast, the Office of Federal Procurement Policy, Driving Improvements in Acquisition. This event is brought to you by SCW and the Acquire Show. This is certainly an exciting time in the federal acquisition community. For years now, the federal government has been trying to find a way to truly leverage its full buying power. Over the last two decades, we've taken a lot of steps in that direction. But in the last couple of years, OFPP has really turned up the heat. In particular, OFPP is making a big push for the Category Management Initiative, which really represents a new way of doing business. They also continue to push for improvements in the acquisition workforce and in government industry relationships. That's some of what you'll be hearing about in today's webcast. Our speaker is Joni Newhart. Joni is the Associate Administrator for Acquisition Workforce Programs at OFPP. She has more than 30 years of experience in federal government contracting. Prior to joining OFPP, she worked in a variety of organizations, including uh, 13 years supporting the Naval Air Systems Command as a contractor. She also served as the Procurement Chief at the SEC and the, the Senior Procurement Executive at the Small Business Administration and the Department of Transportation. But before we get started, I'd, I'd like to cover just a few housekeeping items. First. If you'd like to enlarge the slides, look for the green icon in the top right corner of the slide window. Click on that, and that should do the trick. Also, at any time during the next hour, if you'd like to submit a question, just look for the question field to the left of the slide window. Type your question in there and hit Submit. If you have any technical difficulties during the session, look for the yellow question mark icon, which you'll find below the slide window. Click there and you'll receive technical assistance. And finally, I want to let you know that in the next day or two, we'll email you a link to an archived version of the session so that you can view it again or share it with a colleague. And with that, I'd like to hand things over to Joni Newhart. Joni? Thank you, John. I appreciate you having me here. And I'm very glad to share some of the exciting things that we're doing in the Office of Federal Procurement Policy around driving improvements in acquisition. So let's get started. Um, today I'm going to cover a few things. I want to explain exactly who OFPP is. A lot of people don't actually know. <laughs> they just see documents and policies coming out from our office. And then I want to talk a little bit about our roadmap for improving acquisition. Um, basically three priorities, buying as one through category management, uh, number two, deploying talent and tools across agencies and growing that talent. Uh, with all with the purpose of driving innovation. And number three, building strong vendor relationships. Our vendor partners are so very important to us in acquisition. So without further ado, um, just real quickly, uh, OFPP was established by Congress in 1974. Basically, we provide overall direction and acquisition policy to the government, and we try and get to economy, efficiency, and effectiveness in acquisition. And our office used to be mainly a policy writing office, and we also um, ha provide regulations through the FAR, the Federal Acquisition Regulation. Now we're, we're more in a helpful mode, I'd like to think of us <laughs> as we do provide a lot of tools, uh, some guidance on how to implement things, and try to be more helpful in general. But who is OFPP? So we have an administrator. This, our current administrator is Ann Rung. She is appointed by the President and confirmed by the Senate. And she's a political appointee, so uh, when the administration changes in nine months, she will leave as well and we'll get a, a new administrator at some point. We have a, a wonderful deputy administrator named Leslie Field, an associate administrator, Matthew Blum, and I'm the associate administrator for acquisition workforce. We have 11 staff members, so it's a, a pretty small office, so we like to call ourselves small but mighty. Um, we have a lot of work to do and very passionate and mission-driven people in the office, so it's, it's a real pleasure to work here. And today I'm going to be talking about this um, concept in a memo that Ann Rung, our administrator, released uh, December 2014, so a little over a year ago. And this is her roadmap for transforming the marketplace with those three priorities I previously mentioned. And you can find this, this document by simply Googling Transforming the Marketplace OFPP and you can read more details about what I'm going to talk about today. So let's go into the priorities. 
priority one, buying is one through category management. So you can see the quote from Ann Rung. She's very insistent that we need to change this paradigm. When she came on board, we had done a bit of work in the area of strategic sourcing, and category management is a step beyond that. So think about our $450 billion of government spend, and just think about all of the common spend across the agency, and that totals up to about $270 billion. In all different areas, you can see the different areas uh, on the third bullet, IT, professional services, medical, to name a few. And there's really no reason why 3,000 different uh, purchasing organizations throughout the government should be buying those items independently and separately. Uh, it doesn't take advantage of our volume. We can't get better deals. Um, there's not a lot of demand management. And so this can be managed a lot more strategically, and that is exactly uh, Ms. Rung's point. So how are we going about doing this? Uh, GSA is a big partner, and if you haven't heard of the Acquisition Gateway, you're going to want to go there because it's really an interesting site. They have different things like a prices paid portal, so you can see what maybe HUD paid for the same table that you want to buy. You can also see a solutions matrix. So if I want to buy, uh, say, that table, then it will tell me different contracts, government-wide contracts, that I might not have known about, that now I know about them on this portal, and I can find out different information about how to best buy that table. That's probably not a good example. I, I doubt that's too complicated, but you get the general idea here. There's a lot of information for both uh, requiring folks, for contracting folks, even part of the hallway is open to vendors and the public. So I think you'll be hearing a lot more about this, and you need to stay in the know with that hallway because it's, it's being created in an agile manner. So every two weeks or every month, there's an update, an improvement, and I think you'll be really interested in the information there, and it will help you do your job better. I think the overarching point is there's no point in taking uh, an acquisition professional's very valuable time buying these things that you can buy uh, very easily with the information on the hallway. And then you can spend all of your time, if you're a contracting professional, on the more complex things, the more high visibility things, the, the IT projects that have constantly failed. You can spend your very valuable time doing those types of things and, and knock the easy stuff out uh, using the hallway information. So that's one piece of it. The other piece is uh, in October of 2015, uh, Ms. Rung and Mr. Scott, who's the federal CIO, issued this policy around category management, improving the acquisition and management of common information technology laptops and desktops. And in this policy, they told agencies, do not write your own contract for these two things because it makes no sense. We have three government-wide contracts that are good, they're available, and you should, should be buying off those contracts. Do not waste your very valuable time doing your own contract. And this is a, a pretty radical departure. I remember when I was at Department of Transportation, I was of the mindset that we're different. We need to buy our, to have our own contract for laptops or desktops, whatever it is. And, and my thinking has honestly evolved where I, I think that's not value added at all. <laughs> And so we're going to continue down this path. Right now we have software and mobile policies that are out in draft. And as far as the results for category management, so far we've saved $2 billion, nothing to sneeze at, and more to come on that. And when we issued this memo in October 2015, since then we have seen some of the prices for PCs drop around 50%. So we're already seeing the benefits of this strategy and we're going to keep marching down this lane uh, for the next nine months and a lot of work in this area. We have uh, category managers for each of those categories on the previous slide. So what those people are, they're dedicated people that know that space, they know that industry, and so they're able to lend their expertise to this whole effort. So that is, is priority number one. Let's move over to priority number two, driving innovation. So as you may have observed through different uh, news media reports or just in your own agency, the acquisition professionals in general have become fairly risk averse, right? Because they have um, you know, GAO checking on them, the IG checking on them. They want to avoid protests, which extend the acquisition process uh, dramatically. 
So they're, they're very careful about trying new things. Um, and we're trying to push them to try new things because it, it's really an imperative right now. We cannot keep doing things the same way, and we need to find new and better ways to do business. Uh, we were able recently to get a slice of the FE, the Federal Employee Viewpoint Survey data. The 1102s are the contracting professionals, and so OPM was able to slice off the 1102 data so we could look at the FEVS survey through their eyes. And we found out that 91% of these contracting professionals want to, to look for ways to do things better, but only 37% feel that creativity and innovation are rewarded. So pretty big gap there. Um, so we're doing some things in this area to try and to move the dial there. Um, so a couple of the things that we're doing, uh, this is a really interesting program. Uh, it's called the Digital IT Acquisition Professional Training. And it's basically a program to teach how to teach contracting professionals. That's the first step. Um, we realize the acquisition workforce is bigger than just the contracting folks. To teach the contracting professionals how to buy digital services. As you can imagine, you can't really use the tried and true skills that we learned in contracting class to buy digital services. It requires a different mindset and a different strategy. We also didn't think that you know we could send them to class and a week later, boop, out pops a digital services expert. So we uh, did a challenge on challenge.gov, which was an interesting process in itself. And we ended up getting a team of um, ASI government and ICF International to build out this blended experiential program for us. Now what I mean by blended is it has a strong online component, it has an online portal, and then there's also classroom training. So with a blended concept, you, you have folks do their learning ahead of time and then come to class after learning the topic, and then they can actually discuss it, how to implement it, what are the barriers, what are the problems. And in the classroom, they get to sit next to their, their colleagues, so there's about 30 of them from across the government learning how to do the digital services procurement. It's very interesting. The first class just graduated in April. And uh, we're going to do another pilot. And I think this may be the, uh, a really good model for teaching other things in the future. So it keeps the folks in their job, but make sure they have dedicated time to commit to the program to learn the new strategies. Uh, and then the experiential part is we actually give them a live digital assignment at, a, at an agency. So really roll up their sleeves and try these new principles they're learning on a real problem. And that is very eye-opening, and that's a really great way for people to learn. So that's exciting. And the whole program starts off with a pre-assessment. So after I take the pre-assessment, I might have a different learning path than, than John does when he takes the pre-assessment. So it's tailored to the individual through this online learning portal. And it's, uh, it's not like anything that we've done before. So I think that's a real game changer. Um, we're also, as I mentioned, providing tools to try and help people. So OFPP uh, and U.S. Digital Services work together to develop the tech FAR. And you might think, is that a different version of the FAR? No, it's not. It's basically showing what the flexibilities that are currently in the FAR, how you might apply them to IT. So it's a really helpful document. Then there's the Digital Services Playbook, which tells you how to actually implement plays of buying digital services. That's really helpful. And then our administrator started something that's very popular, uh, Behind the Buy podcast. So she actually interviews um, some of the folks that have done some of the plays in the playbook so that people can hear, how did they actually do that? What were their barriers? Um, and those, uh, I think, are very well received. So those are different tools. We also have a FAI, who's our partner, the Federal Acquisition Institute, has developed a contract specialist smart guide, a program manager guidebook, so lots of tools out there uh, to help people. And then finally, we just recently in March issued a memo around acquisition innovation labs. And so we're asking each of the CFO Act agencies to uh, establish an acquisition innovation lab within their agency or something similar. We're not very prescriptive here. And again, you can find this memo by just Googling Acquisition Innovation Lab, OFPP. Um, basically, the concept is we want 
agencies to have a safe place where people can try new ideas, new ways of doing business. And we think that will provide some top cover, and then it, it's always great to have a pilot to try something new, and if it doesn't work, it's not a big deal. You try something else. Um, so we're very eager to see uh, exactly how that will play out as well. So let's move on to priority number three, building stronger vendor relationships. Uh, I will tell you in my uh, acquisition career that being partners and using industry to the best advantage is just critical to having good program outcomes. There's a bunch of knowledge out in industry, and the more we can tap it, you know, we're all taxpayers, so the better it is. Uh, but a couple different things we're doing in this space. We're doing something called Acquisition 360. So we're basically surveying uh, vendors regarding a procurement effort, so not asking them about a specific contracting officer, but about the procurement overall. So we're getting their input. We're asking contracting folks for that same procurement, how did the program office do? You know, what could have been done better? And then we're also asking the program office folks how the procurement went. So we're getting those three angles of viewpoints around procurement. And actually, it's going to the senior procurement executives at the different agencies. And they're finding the information really helpful. We haven't done something like this before. And really, with this information, it gives them a way to find out what they can improve in their procurement. Right now, we've, we're focusing on high-value IT procurements, and we've we've had the first round of this, and it, it's uh, well received. And I think people like being asked their opinion, and also seeing that things improve for the better. So that's a great initiative. We've also been doing something else called a national dialogue. So that's asking anybody, the public, federal workers, uh, vendors, to come tell us what we can do better. How can we simplify this? very complex federal acquisition process. What simple things can we do that would make your life easier? And you can get to this national dialogue through uh, CAO.gov, and it's ongoing. And finally, we've started a series called Lifting the Curtain in partnership with uh, this great association, ACT IAC, who we do a lot of things with, and they help us a lot and other parts of OMB a lot. Um, so, so far we've done to bid or not to bid from industry's pers perspective. So we had people from a small um, industry vendor, a middle-sized vendor, and a large vendor giving us their perspective on when they get uh, solicitations, how they think about whether they bid or don't bid, and really some eye-opening information that we've gotten and shared with our uh, contracting professionals. Uh, that's been a great effort. And then market intelligence versus market research, we did that at the NCMA conference last year. And we just did something called Understanding the Government Technical Evaluation Committee. We did that at uh, ACT-IAC's Acquisition Excellence. And that was very well received because I, you know, I've been on both sides of the fence there, the industry side and the government side. And a lot of industry folks just really don't understand what goes on in that technical evaluation committee. It's, it's not like a big secret, but um, you know, it's just something that we haven't really talked about before. So we find that that's really helpful. And so my ACT IAC colleagues continue to think of, of new things that we might talk about in the series. So we're trying to do something about every quarter. So keep your eye on that. And um, you maybe want to come to one of the next ones. And so let's see, I think we are done with my uh, official presentation. I did want to offer up my email address in case anybody wants to contact me about any of the things I've talked about. I would welcome your email. It is very easy, uh, J Newhart, so J-N-E-W-H-A-R-T at O-M-B dot E-O-P dot gov. So I thank you for however you interface with government acquisition. And uh, keep an eye on the next nine months as we keep going forward with these initiatives. I think we'll make some good progress. So now I'm going to turn it back over to John. Great. Thank you. So, yeah, so let's move into the Q&A. And first question, no surprise, is about category management. You mentioned how important the category managers are to your category management efforts. But what specifically are they expected to do? Sure. Uh, their roles, they're really the linchpin to making this effort successful. So they have to identify the business needs of an agency 
And this goes beyond just reducing costs. So they have to understand what truly matters to the agency and their customers. They have to have a very in-depth knowledge of the external market. They have to know the industry dynamics, uh, where the market's headed. So they are really the government experts on whatever industry they're the category manager for. So very, very important folks. OK, great. All right, let's see, next question. On digital service training, your new digital service training for contracting professionals sounds really different from other contracting training. Can you talk more about kind of what goes into this? Sure. I, I could talk all day about this training. It's so exciting and, <laughs> and new and different. Um, so this new training and development program really mimics the principles of agile software design. And by that, I mean that when we started the program, the first module of six modules was developed. But then a very important piece of the program is the assessment piece. So did they learn what they were supposed to learn? And did they enjoy learning it? Were there any problems? What didn't they learn? This whole big ecosystem of assessment. And so that assessment and that information goes into building the next module. So this was done in a very agile manner as we progressed. It was very, very interesting. Um, I mentioned the self-assessment. That, that's one thing that's really different with this is that the learning experience, the learning path can be tailored to each individual, which is so valuable. And then I mentioned the classroom component, the online component. Uh, in the online portal, there's a whole different variety of ways to learn. So reading, simulations, uh, videos, you name it. Um, and then graduates of the program are going to be part of an alumni program. So we don't just want to send them back to the agency and say, see ya, have fun, because we know they won't be successful unless we help them with their ecosystem back at the agency. So we, we are working on ways to introduce agile and digital services to other parts of the agency to help support them and overall agency efforts. And, but we want to keep these folks as alumni so they'll still have access to the online portal, they'll get new information. So we're building, I'm not overly fond of the, the uh, word community of practice, but that's basically what we're building is a core group of people that know digital services and can communicate, share knowledge, and collaborate. Okay, great. And it looks like we have time for one more question. So here's one about Acquisition 360. So what results have you seen yet so far? Oh, great question. Um, so we've collected data from about 1,100 vendors who competed for complex IT acquisitions. So we hope to have insight from 6,500 vendors by the end of the year. And basically, the preliminary results tell us we need to improve the quality of post-award debriefings. So we've done a couple of things in that space already. We have a mock debriefing webinar posted at FAI.gov in the media library there. Um, we also offer debriefing training. Uh, if you go into FATAS, which is our training management system, you can access some of that training. And OFPP is currently drafting the third in its series of very popular uh, myth-busting memos, and this one's around debriefing. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, great. Well, we are out of time. I would like to thank Joni Newhart for a very informative session. Um, but before we sign off, I do want to make sure that everyone knows about the Acquire Show. Acquire is a free two-day conference and expo for government, military, and contractor professionals who are looking to deliver on agency missions covering a program's entire life cycle from policy setting to end user experience, Acquire offers thought leadership, training sessions, and a packed expo floor. The Acquire show is happening on June 8th and 9th at the Convention Center in Washington, D.C., and you can learn more about it at acquireshow.com. Thank you all very much for attending today, and we look forward to seeing you in June.